Well now on BBC One, it's time for this afternoon's results and headlines with Ralph Della in Final Score. Hello, and on this May Day bank holiday, the headlines are in snooker, Steve Davis has edged back in front at the Crucible. And in football, well, the hopes and fears of some 40 teams went into the melting pot today. Some of the promotion and relegation issues have been settled. In uh, the first division, West Ham are safe, but Portsmouth, well, I'm afraid they're relegated. Millwall reached the first division for the first time in their history. Cardiff gained promotion from the fourth, and Lincoln, they're back in the league. Details coming up very soon, but first, the classified results. Barclays League Division 1. Arsenal 1, Coventry City 1. Charlton Athletic 1, Tottenham Hotspur 1. Derby County 0, Everton 0. Liverpool 1, Southampton 1. Luton Town 2, Watford 1. Oxford United 0, Manchester United 2. Two. Portsmouth 1, Newcastle United 2, West Ham United 4, Chelsea 1. League Division 2, Aston Villa 1, Bradford City 0, Barnsley 0, Middlesbrough 3, Blackburn Rovers 1, Reading 1, Bournemouth 2, Swindon Town 0, Hull City 0, Millwall, 1. Ipswich Town, 1. Birmingham City, 0. Leeds United, 1. Crystal Palace, 0. Leicester City against Huddersfield Town is an evening kickoff. Manchester City, 4. West Bromwich Albion, 2. Plymouth Argyle, 1. Oldham Athletic, 0. Stoke City, 1. Shrewsbury Town, 1. League Division 3, Aldershot against Preston North End is a late result. Blackpool 1, Chesterfield 0. Bristol Rovers 3, Walsall 0. Chester City 2, Brighton 2. Doncaster Rovers against South End United, evening kickoff. Fulham 0, Bury 1. Gillingham 0, Rotherham United 2. Mansfield Town and Brentford, a late kickoff. Notts County and Port Vale and Sunderland and Northampton Town, both evening matches. Wigan Athletic, nil. Grimsby Town, one. York City, nil. Bristol City, one. Division four, Bolton Wanderers, four. Colchester United, nil. Cardiff City, two. Crew Alexandra, nil. Carlisle United, 0, Swansea City, 1. Darlington, 0, Newport County, 2. Halifax Town, 2, Torquay United, 3. Hereford United against Burnley, an evening kickoff. Peterborough United, 0, Scarborough, 0. Rochdale, 1, Wrexham, 2. Scunthorpe United, 1. Exeter City, 1. Stockport County and Cambridge United, evening kickoff. Tranmere Rovers, 2. Leighton Orient, 1. Wolverhampton Wanderers, 2. Hartlepool United, 0. The Vauxhall Conference, Altrincham, 6. Dagenham, 0. Cheltenham Town, 1. Sutton United, 1. Lincoln City, 2. Wickham Wanderers, 0. Northwich Victoria, nil. Wealdstone, nil. Stafford Rangers, three. Boston United, four. Welling United, nil. Barnet, two. Weymouth, one. Enfield, three. So those are the results. Let's have a look at how they affect the top of Division 1, with Liverpool, of course, already crowned as champions. Manchester United have clinched runners-up spot. They won today 2-0 at Oxford. And before Liverpool's game with Southampton, they were presented with the league trophy by Mr Graham Kelly, the secretary of the Football League, here handing it to the Liverpool skipper, Alan Hansen. 
There we are, it's been in existence for 100 years, but uh, Alan Hansen dropping the top of it. Liverpool dropped a couple of points today. They were held to a one-all draw by Southampton. The other trophy, the other bit of silverware there, is the Barclays trophy. There we are, passed along the line. Everybody has to have a little go. There we are, Liverpool, undoubtedly the champions. Now, May Day might have been the name of the bank holiday. It could also have been a distress call for the four of the London sides that were locked into the relegation zone in the first division this morning. Two rather tense derbies, I would imagine. In uh, one of them, West Ham and Chelsea, it resulted in a 4-1 victory to West Ham, as we hear from David Davis. An exhilarating match of wild passion and mighty controversy, won and deservedly so by a West Ham side who found their form in their hour of most desperate need. Leroy Rossini, both hero and villain. Two first half goals, number one splendidly struck, the second, despite Chelsea's frantic offside appeals, equally well dispatched. But then, seven minutes after Paul Hilton had made it 3-0, Rossini sent off after his violent reaction to an incident involving Clark and Wicks. Yet even against ten men, Chelsea, Hustled out of it in midfield by Dickens, Ward and Robson, found West Ham and the occasion really too much for them. Six bookings, late on, substitute West did manage a consolation goal for Chelsea, but even then Cotty popped up to make it 4-1. It was high drama to the very end. I bet it was West Ham moving to safety, but Charlton are still in the thick of it. They drew 1-1 at Selhurst Park with Spurs this morning, watched by Barry Davis. Very much one for the committed, with corners greeted with thunderclaps and oohs and ahs accompanying every goal-mouth incident. With Charlton Steve McKenzie, denied earlier by Barry Mims, striking the game's best shot, a volley just over the bar, and Tottenham's Clive Allen allowing Bob Boulder to be brilliant from point-blank range, a goalless draw looked likely. But suddenly, in the 70th minute, Charlton were mesmerised by Waddle's shuffles, and Hodge tapped in. A moment for the neutral, Spurs in front, but Charlton were level within four minutes. Mark Reed scoring from the penalty spot after Sam Ways had turned goalkeeper to keep out Garth Crook's header. Always trying to play football, Charlton certainly deserved their point. Well, that's how the bottom of Division 1 looks this evening, with Portsmouth, Watford and Oxford United already relegated. The uh, Chelsea against Charlton meeting on Saturday at Stamford Bridge looks very interesting. Now then, who goes up from Division 2? Well, part of the answer to that is Millwall. They went to Hull today, needing a win to make certain. The result, Hull nil, Millwall won. Gerald Sinstat reports. They're singing and dancing on the pitch. Five minutes from the end, the sun came out and you sensed that the South London dream was about to come true. Millwall's ascension after 103 years was suitably apocalyptic, starting with thunder and lightning and rain drenching the majority of their 4,000 odd supporters. O'Callaghan's second penalty in three days gave them the points after 11 minutes. Not much to show, but this is a ground where Millwall had won only once in 23 previous visits. And only some good saves, the woodwork and a clearance off the line prevented Cascarino and Sheringham from adding to their total of 46 goals. Millwall spent shrewdly to earn their promotion and they'll need to be wise with the cash that's available, to, available now. To be honest, they don't look a first division side yet, but the foundations are sound and at this juncture, the only fair thing to say is that they've earned their promotion, not least by keeping their nerve and character when others with better pedigree faltered. The M1 could be in for the biggest knees up it's seen in years. All the way down the old Kent Road as well, no doubt. Well, the Fixer Computer had made uh, an interesting match today with Aston Villa, who were fourth this morning, against Bradford City, who were second. Aston Villa came back to form right at the right moment. They won 1-0. They were watched by Harry Grayson. Bradford City's dream of First Division football was all but shattered by a superbly taken headed goal by David Platt just 24 minutes into the game. Villa should by rights have had the game sewn up by half-time. Warren Aspinall missed three clear chances as City failed to do themselves justice. Only Henry and Futcher caused problems. The crowd of 36,400, the highest in the second division anywhere this season, saw a different story in the second half. Villa sat on their lead. City attacked for just about the whole of the 45 minutes, but only Futcher, Henry again and Leonard really created openings. Villa's home form came good in the end, and with the way the second division has been going this season, anything can still happen next Saturday. And that's the top of Division 2. The little P means that Millwall are promoted. Middlesbrough are in the other promotion place. Aston Villa, Bradford City and Blackburn Rovers are the ones in the playoff positions at the moment. 
And that's the bottom of Division 2. With Reading still not out of it, they can still scrape into the playoffs if they do the business in their next games. And there's the top of Division 3. Sunderland, who play Northampton tonight, were assured of the third division championship when Walsall lost 3-0 at Bristol Rovers this afternoon. And that defeat means Walsall lose second place on goal difference to Brighton, who drew 2-2 at Chester. Notts County play tonight. And a late result, Mansfield 2, Brentford 1. And a latest score, no goals between Aldershot and Preston North End. This is the bottom of Division 3. York and Doncaster already down. South End play tonight. Grimsby helped their chances of survival with a 1-0 win at Wigan. And Wolves, the fourth division champions. Another two goals from Steve Bull, taking his total for the season to 52, giving them a 2-0 win over Hartlepool. Cardiff uh, join them in the third division next season after their 2-0 win over Crewe. Torquay are favourites for the third promotion spot after their win at Halifax. And there's the top of Division V, bottom of Division IV rather, Newport County wish it was the top, but they are definitely demoted, of course. And at the top of the Vauxhall Conference, Lincoln will take Newport's place, regaining their league status after just one season in the Vauxhall Conference. They made certain of the title with a 2-0 win over Wickham Wanderers, leaving Barnet with a runners-up spot for the second successive season. And a 9,000-plus crowd at Lincoln today, that's a record for the Vauxhall Conference. Now then, some uh, cricket matches going on today, the fourth day of county championship matches. And uh, Somerset are 212 runs behind Glamorgan, or at least they were when rain stopped play. The match between Gloucestershire and Sussex was abandoned, Gloucestershire taking five points and Sussex seven. Lancashire and Warwickshire, Lancashire are still 152 runs behind Warwickshire, and uh, I'm afraid it's raining again. And look at that, at Lords. Essex have been beaten, Middlesex winning by 176 runs. Well, now racing and the big race of the day at Haydock Park today was the Swinton Insurance Trophy Handicap Hurdle, better known to you as me as the 130. This is how they finished. Cass trying to produce a run, coming down to the last final flight now. Past Glorious and Cashew King, there's a little between them. Past Glorious, lands in the lead from Cashew King, second, then Beldale Star and far away lad racing into the closing stages. It's Past Glorious with the advantage from Cashew King and Beldale Star. Past Glorious is holding Cashew King and is going to win it. Past Glorious and Patrick Farrell have won it from in second place, Cashew King. Beldale and they have won it. Past Glorious, number five, coming in at 16 to 1, 14, Cashew King at 2.